If you follow Streamzy on GitHub, you have probably seen the term Streamzy bot sets in multiple different issues, PRs and proposals. But maybe it's not completely clear what it is and why should you care. And that's what we will try to explain in this video. Today, when you deploy Kafka cluster with Streamzy, it will be using stateful sets. Streamzy operator will create the stateful set resource and Kubernetes will create the pods with the Kafka brokers or zookeeper nodes based on the stateful set definition. That has some advantages. Stateful sets are standard Kubernetes resource, which is well known and well tested. And even in a situation where the Streamzy operator will not be running, Kubernetes will be still managing the pods. So if one of the pods is deleted, Kubernetes will automatically restart it. But stateful sets have also some limitations. When Streamzy deploys the Kafka cluster, each pod will represent one Kafka broker. And the sequence numbers from the pod names will be used as the broker IDs. So a free node Kafka cluster will always have the Kafka brokers with ID 0, 1, and 2. And when you scale the cluster up, the stateful set will give the new pods always the names with the next index in the sequence. So it will be the pods with Kafka 3 and Kafka 4. Similarly, when you scale down, always the last pods with the highest index will be removed. You cannot remove the pods from the middle of the sequence or from the beginning. Another limitation is that all the pods need to have the same configuration. They will have the same number of disks. They will have the same resources, the same CPU or memory, and they will have the same configuration. The stateful sets helped us on the beginning, but as we are adding new and more advanced features to Streamzy, their limitations are becoming more and more blocking factors for us. That's why we decided to move to something what we call Streamzy pod sets. In the future, when Streamzy deploys your Kafka cluster, it will first create an internal custom resource called Streamzy pod set. And based on this resource, which will be used as the definition for the pods, Streamzy will directly create the different pods. That will give us a lot of advantages in managing the pods directly, but it also means that Streamzy will have more responsibilities. In the future, if the Streamzy operator will not be running and one of your pods is deleted, there will be nobody to start the new pod again based on the Streamzy pod set definition. Only once Streamzy is running again, the pod can be restarted by Streamzy. We hope that the new features which we will be able to build on top of the Streamzy pod sets will be worth the additional responsibility which Streamzy will need to handle. The initial implementation brings some minor improvements. For example, when resizing persistent volumes, it will not be needed anymore to roll all of the Kafka brokers. Similarly, when scaling up a Kafka cluster which is using external listeners, it will not be needed to roll all of the pre-existing pods. But in the future, we hope to be able to add some additional and more interesting improvements as well. Scaling up or down of the Kafka cluster should have much, much more flexibility. It should be possible to remove brokers from the beginning of the sequence or from the middle of the sequence. And when adding new brokers to the cluster, you should not be any, lim any more limited to the next sequence number, but you can just create the broker with any broker ID you want. Similarly, it should be possible to have different brokers with a different configuration. For example, some brokers might be using multiple disks, while others might need more resources. And some might need different configuration. Another area where we think the Streamzy pod sets should prove helpful is when running Kafka without Zookeeper. The Kafka nodes in the Zookeeper as Kafka will have two different roles. The controller role, 
for the nodes which are members of the craft quorum and the broker role for the nodes which are serving the regular messages. And it is important that you are able to transition between the different architectures which the Zookeeper plus Kafka will support. You might, for example, start with a cluster like this, which have three Kafka brokers, and each of them has both the controller and the broker role. But maybe as your cluster is growing and you are adding more brokers, this architecture doesn't make sense anymore. With the Strimzy pod sets, it should be possible to easily transition to a different architecture where we will have three brokers, which will have only the controller role and play the craft quorum, and then another three brokers, which will be only the brokers for handling the user messages. Another use case which should be possible in the future is support for stretch clusters, where the Kafka cluster is running over multiple Kubernetes clusters, where some of the Kafka brokers are running on one cluster while others are running somewhere else. And even if you don't want to run the Kafka cluster stretch permanently across multiple Kubernetes clusters, this feature might be still interesting to migrate from one Kubernetes cluster to another. Hopefully, this got you interested into Streamsy pod sets and you are eager to try them out. To do that, you just need to make sure that the use Streamsy pod sets feature gate is enabled and you can use them. It can be enabled or disabled anytime. Streamsy just needs a rolling update of the Zookeeper and Kafka cluster to move either to the Streamsy pod sets when enabling it or to move back to stateful sets when disabling it. Streamsy pod sets can be also enabled during upgrades and downgrades, but be careful if you are downgrading to a version which does not support Streamsy pod sets, you always need to disable them first. In Streams 029, the Streams pod sets should be feature complete and there are no known bugs, but they are still disabled by default and you have to enable them manually. In Streams 030, we will enable them by default, but it will still be possible to disable them. And finally, in Streams 032, unless some new issues are discovered, the Streamsy pod sets will be enabled by default and it will not be possible to disable them anymore. And the stateful sets will not be supported. Hopefully, this video explained to you why are Streamsy pod sets important and why should you be looking forward to them. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter to not miss any future updates.